Hi there. Today we will discuss how socialization as a homeschooler happens. Because it is a big question that is always asked and so it deserves some attention. I asked the question too 15 years ago before I started homeschooling and of course the grandparents dutifully asked that question as well. My children are very social and um, I think we need to first though define what socialization really is. So number one, it's the activity of mixing socially with others. And number two, it's the process of learning to behave in a way that is acceptable to society. It's an important part of growing into adulthood, so we all know that. So again, it's going to deserve some attention. But first I would like to ask a question of non-homeschoolers. Why do we think we need to ask that question of people deciding to homeschool? There must be some preconceived notions about what homeschooling is. We must believe that the children are literally home all the time. And if they do happen to come out of their house, they are fearfully gathered around their mother's legs, hiding within the folds of her skirt because they've never seen strangers before. That is such a silly image of homeschooling, and yet our society has that. Then there is the belief that only if kids are in school, in a real brick and mortar school, are they surrounded by people with whom they can socialize. And again, this is a silly notion because we've all seen kids socializing around us. They're on the playground, they're on sports teams, they're in clubs, they're in church, they're on the internet, and so on and so forth. So the question of how socialization happens if the child is not in a brick and mortar school becomes quite a silly one. My middle son, who ended up going into the public school system in high school, once wrote a paper about homeschooling that focused on the fact that the only thing he remembered of eight years of homeschooling was always being in the car driving to places. Those places were scouts, uh, piano and guitar lessons, library story hour, community soccer practices and games, theater practice, play dates, Pokemon tournaments, archery club, the community pool and playground, state parks to hike, bike and picnic at, wrestling practice, community football practices and games, church, vacation Bible school, volunteer opportunities, classes offered by our homeschool cooperative, and so on and so forth. We live in a rural area, so everything is, on average is about a half hour away. So when we were always driving, it was because we were always headed off to meet other people. These activities happened in the elementary and middle school years. When a child reaches the high school years, the onus is on them to keep their friendships alive and well, or they just move on to other friendships just like we adults do. But the groundwork has already been laid. The child knows that to have a social life, one needs to be around other people. And therefore the child reaches out to get involved in activities that they enjoy. Mixing socially as socialization is partially defined, initially takes effort on the part of the parents, lots of effort. Uh, but then later on it takes that continued effort on the part of the child as they mature. But even before you step one foot outside the house to socialize, socialization is going to start in your family. The others, in the case of the family, are family members. Naturally, within a family, there is the mixing socially with others, and the others, of course, are the family members. The society in learning to behave in a way that is acceptable to society, which is the second part of the definition. So the society in this case is going to be the family. The child will learn how to interact with siblings and with parents or parental figures. And this gets modeled and taught by those parental figures. There must be the effort by the parental figures to model the correct behavior. It is perhaps easier to say what is not acceptable to society rather than what is. So in the home and then further on into society, the modeling of incorrect behavior, incorrect, would be screaming at someone, 
um, using foul language, lying to each other, physical or emotional abuse, belittling someone. Those are all unacceptable uh, behaviors in society. Um, how about when you're in the, comp the company of another human being and you're constantly looking at your phone or your computer or the TV or the iPad? Okay, while you're with somebody in their company, um, that's unacceptable behavior. So we don't want to model that in our families. Um, living like a slob, unacceptable in society, and therefore we don't want to model it in our families as well. You get the idea. In other words, you want to treat each member of your family exactly the way you want to be treated. You probably already have heard this. It's called the golden rule. And then your child will learn how to behave in the way that is acceptable to society. You want to treat each member of your family with dignity and respect. And as your child experiences that behavior, they will go out into the larger world and do likewise. So socialization starts in the home. Now within your family, activities that will lend themselves to socializing are to at least eat dinner together as a family because that's going to encourage discussion and correct table manners. Those are just examples. Playing games together are going to encourage good sportsmanship skills, taking turns, sharing, working towards a shared goal, working together towards a shared goal, going out together is going to teach the skills of polite travel habits when you, um, while you're in close quarters, you want to respect people that are in the vehicle with you and not take on terrible, you know, like I said, terrible behavioral attributes. So going together as a family is going to enable you to teach your children the correct behavior. So they are very important as your child experiences and has adventures beyond the home that at first they see it modeled correctly in the home. As an example to you, in our country, in our culture, um, eating pasta with a fork or spoon is acceptable, but eating it with your hand, of course, is not. So those kinds of behaviors that are correct within our culture, in our country, are started to be learned in the home. And of course, you already know this. And you're already doing this. But homeschooling is going to give you more of an opportunity. So instead of the short time span you have from the time your children comes home from school and then goes to bed, you're going to have all day to model correct behavior. Another thing they're going to see you doing is if you're teaching your child in the home, they're going to see how teaching is modeled by you. And they're going to... Um, you're going to be able to help them understand how to um, be a correct, correctly behaved student, okay? Not interrupting you when you talk, things like that. Okay, so maybe you're wondering how I found all the different activities that I listed before, you know, for my children to do. How did I provide them with such an active social life? When I decided to homeschool, the very first thing I did was I looked on the internet to see if there were any homeschool support groups in my area. And I got on their email loop and I found a whole bunch of people that were doing lots of different activities and I started to get involved. Um, even the women I'm working with on this project right now for our Eagle Mom Squad a website, YouTube videos, podcasts, blog, I knew them loosely for the last 15 years. We've seen each other at different activities over the years. And who would have ever guessed that today we'd be working together? Because, like I said, it was very loosely that we've known each other. Um, so that's you know one way I have found for uh, helping my kids become more active. I was working on a very low budget. Uh, I would say an almost non-existent budget. So free was really important to me. So one of the things I also did was to look in the newspaper to see what free activities were going on. Um, and then we'd go to those activities and we'd bring friends along. There's so many things to do in your, in your community that you can almost be too busy with them. Another thing we did was when my uh, oldest became a ninth grader, we joined a homeschool tutorial. Now a homeschool tutorial is kind of like a hybrid school. It is uh, two days a week 
We usually meet at a location that has a lot of classrooms, usually like a church, a parish hall. Um, they usually have classrooms that they teach. They, they used to teach religious education on the weekends. So those have been our sites. So there would be about 24 families, at least in our tutorial there were, about 24 families, about 60 kids, and the moms would teach the different classes, all the subjects, uh, ranging from fifth grade up to 12th grade. Uh, sometimes we bring in an outside tutor. But um, so two days a week we do that from nine to three. And then the other three days of the week, uh, the schoolwork would be done at home. Now some people would say, well, that's not really homeschooling. But the fact of the matter is, the responsibility still falls on the parent uh, to be in charge of their child's education. And also, using outside resources, like we do with a tutorial, uh, lots of homeschoolers do that. Ours just happens to be in one location. So being part of that tutorial also bolstered my children's social skills, quite like being in a brick and mortar school. But the three reasons why I even considered it was because one, my children would then have a different adult whom which, uh, they could learn from and be accountable to. Because sometimes, you know, they don't really listen to mom or dad. Um, number two, it provided them a little bit of competition, friendly competition. I would call it gentle peer pressure to step up their game in academics. And the third reason is um, the tutorial provided a little bit of structure which my ninth grader really needed going into the high school years. So now, in researching this topic of socialization for homeschoolers, in an order not to be one-sided, I talked to my middle son about how the transition went for him going from homeschooling for eight years into the public school in ninth grade. Now, his answers could be attributed to simply maturing through the teen years, but I still will give him a voice. He said he felt he needed to catch up to the other kids that he encountered in public school. He had to get smart quick on the topics that they discussed between themselves, and he needed to learn how to navigate group dynamics. My youngest, who swims for the local public um, high school swim team, even though she is a homeschooled student, she's allowed to do that in our state of Pennsylvania, um, she has also had to learn these skills as she has navigated the team dynamics. Now. Um, some people will also point out that with socialization uh, in homeschooling, one of the benefits is you get to socialize a whole lot more with people of all ages, not just your age of, say, 15 or 17. You get to home, um, socialize with all the ages because you've got families involved. So you've got young kids, babies, up to, you know, the adults. And that enables children who are homeschooled to be very, um, it's very easy for them to converse or to interact with people of all ages. My kids have been um, complimented on their ability to, like I said, navigate a discussion with an adult versus navigating a discussion with you know, a toddler. They can do it all, and very nicely. Um, so if you are thinking about homeschooling and your child has been in either parochial or public school, you may wonder, how can I reassure my child that they're going to have an opportunity to socialize? And I would just say, you, you, you just need to tell them you're you, you, mom, dad, parental figure, are going to have to put in the effort and you are willing to put in that effort for them because you recognize how important it is and you're going to give it everything you've got uh, to make sure that they continue their friendships, that they are able to continue the activities that they're involved in and you're not going to shortchange them. So that's what I would do. I, and I would start putting it on the calendar, the different things that your child wants to do so that they can see that you really mean business because you don't want to give them, you don't want to give them all sugar talk and just, and then forget about it. You really want them to know that they can trust you, that you've got their back. It's important to you. It's because it's important to them. Um, and finally, I want to talk a little bit about um, skills that children learn in the classroom and that's those are good skills to have 
you can also teach that in your home school. Uh, skills that are such as raising their hand when the teacher wants, um, wants them to answer something instead of blurting out. Um, you also uh, want to make sure that your child knows how to take notes uh, because eventually when, if, they, if and when they go off to college or trade school or they're watching any documentary that they want to learn something about, they need to learn how to take notes. So as a homeschool mom or dad, you're going to want to make sure that they know how to, to do those kinds of things. Um, things that they naturally teach in a public or parochial school, you're going to have to make sure that they know how to do that when they step out of your home and go into, say, a co-op style um, environment or going back to public school or back to private school or going to college. Okay. And, the, and finally, I would also make sure that they understand how to, um, when they want to say something and they're in a conversation, they need to know how to speak when it's their time to speak and not interrupt. And certainly you look around today, people in general just don't even know how to do that. But you as a new homeschooling parent want to try to help guide your kids into polite behavior in speaking. So that's all I have for you today on socialization. I really hope that um, what I've shared with you is something that you can use. Um, but we also have many resources that we're putting on our website and on our Facebook page. And we have a podcast. And all of those links can be found in the description. Thank you and have a great week.